Hello guys, this is all from Open Source Channel. Welcome to new episode on how to. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, share and like the videos. The more you like and share, the more videos I can do. It will help me a lot with the actual Google YouTube algorithm. Now, without any delay, let's go. And today I'm going to show you how I install Chasm on my Ubuntu server. I just have a a virtual server and I'm going to install the community version of Chasm. So I'm going to click on the load and I'm going to copy the download link here. This is what I'm going to copy. This is very important because that's what we're going to use on a script when we're going to install it. Here we got the installation page from Chasm Community Documentation. I'm going to link everything in the description below, so everything's going to be there, right? So I just right clicked and I'm going to copy the link address. What I'm going to do, I'm going to paste it in my text file, just, f you know, f you know, for my own um, information. So I know which is the file I'm going to use. Again, if you have the newer version, because you're going to install it in a later time, make sure if you use that, you update those lines here. You can see the wget that already reflect the actual address on top. All right. So I'm going to leave all this information in the description again below. But you also find all this information, as you can see here. All right. I just made it much easier for me to create a text file. I usually do that in case I got to upload the file to give it to people. All right. So again, that's all been done. Let's start the installation. So I'm going to open my terminal. I'm using Putty. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put uh, those two, the text file and the terminal side by side as much as I can. So you see a better version. I'm just going to enlarge the fonts as you can see here. So you can actually see it better. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start by creating a swap file. The one on the website is one gig. I'm going to create a four gig one. So this is the actual requirements. Just in case you need to know, make sure your server has this requirements. You run in one of those operating systems. I'm going to use uh, Ubuntu 20.04. I got two cores on mine. I got four gig and I got under 25, uh, I think. I don't have SSD, but it's recommended you have SSD for the actual speed. Also, the Docker and the Docker Compose, all the requirements. And to use the environments, you need to have one of those um, browsers that you can see here in the list. Again, all the links in the description below. If you are going to start to copy and paste, I'm going to use the sudo as I am not logged in as a root. So if you are not root, you're going to use sudo. And as you can see here, all the information it actually tells you as well, one gigabyte. If you want to go through this, it's up to you. I'm using four gig. But another thing you want to make sure that you actually paste the lines, as you can see here, as they are, and you have sudo. Otherwise, the actual installation will fail. It does take time, okay? So bear in mind, it's not something you do it in no time. Now, as you can see, the first line has been done, sudo allocate the four gig. I'm going to do the permissions set to 600. I'm creating a MK swap, creating the actual swap of a four gig. Let me copy again. Here we go. Now I'm running a swap on of the mount. That's it. Now let's verify if the actual swap file does exist. And we cat forward slash proc forward slash swaps. Okay. So let's do that. And as you can see here, the last part, when it says file, we got 4194300. And that is a 4 gigabyte swap file that has been created. All right. So now what we're going to do now, we want to make that swap file available on boot, just in case when we actually reboot the machine. So I'm going to copy my last, uh, next line, copy, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, that's done. You don't need the sudo on this one. Again, even if you do put it, it won't make any difference. I just clear to make it again, uh, much clearer the actual terminal. I'm going to do CD forward slash temp. This is what I'm going to put all the stuff in before the actual installation. And this is exactly the same thing you can find on the original guide from Chasm. Here we go. Um, of course, the actual, as I said earlier on, the name of the file may change. Depends which version, which release you are downloading. Let me close this one down. So I'm going to do a sudo 
let me well it does look like right i could do this one here like that it doesn't matter if it's different lines but as you can see it's still one line and you want to make sure there is no break between the line otherwise again you get an error i'm going to copy paste here and press enter that will automatically download the main file once has been done i'm going to start the file that means unzip extract the file inside the actual directory again that is the file that i just loaded without the, the you know the https now i'm going to do an ls this is the what's inside the directory and as you can see that release file is there and the actual directory that has been created it's very important you got that in a so we do cd there let's have a look let's clear up and let's do an ls as you can see all the information is there and install.sh is inside the actual folder now we can actually start the installation that will take below well i think mine took around 20 minutes to do it depends on the size of the machines how powerful it is now this is the next step is important now if you're running anything else on the server then you might want to change the port 443 with something else as it actually states in the notes here now i'm not running anything so i'm going to run it on 443 that is the ssl page do you want to check it by typing the actual ip address and see if you get anything on the 443 you can type uh, https or colon 443 as you can see here but i got nothing if you got something something will pop up that means you need to change the port and you can go to 8443 or any other ports that is most suitable for your server now i'm going to choose the one without l8443 and that will choose the default port for the SSL 443. Here we go. Let's go and paste it. And I'm going to press enter again. It's going to take about 20 minutes. Oh, again, I got to get out of the folder here. I am in the chasm folder. So I need, well, I could do the H, you know, install it as H without, but let, let's do the way they do it, you know, properly on the, on the website. So that's wrong. Here we go here. I have in the wrong directory. I recorded this in this different times because I didn't have time to do it live. So let's go back. Oh, here we go. CD. Here we go. I made another mistake. Here we go. CD. And I'm going to do. Here we go. We got back on the main line here. And I'm going to press enter. This is the correct line. Make sure you are in the temp folder. I'm going to press Y for yes. And I got to do is wait until the termination of the installation of chasm on the ubuntu server again it does take time so relax go for the coffee for you wouldn't take time the time you know it's going to be another uh, i presume i'll let it go for around 10 seconds and then i'll go straight to the final uh part of the installation all right so we are nearly there and here we go we got the installation as completed don't forget to highlight copy and paste somewhere safe this information of course i'm going to show you the password this server will not exist after this tutorial and again this is a personal server so it's never been online so it's quite safe to log in to the admin site you find the username admin and you also got the username already made for you just in case so what we're going to do now we're going to type the ip of the server and if it doesn't come up don't worry you can put https in front or 443 at the end and you get this don't, don't worry about the connection is not private it's a self certificate so you always going to see that warning now we're going to copy the credentials this is the password and the login is the admin at chasm.local and we go we are going inside the dashboard of chasm you got two part of the dashboard you got the admin and you got the workspaces this is the actual admin let me save this for now and as you can see everything looks perfectly working it shouldn't be any problems something i find that except the admin of 50 as i knew it about this space you're only showing about two gig i need to actually look at my proxmox perhaps i made a mistake i thought i, I wrote the four gig but it's only showing up two gigs but apart from that as you can see it's working perfectly well I'm not going to go into much in details in regards of the dashboard, all the functions, all the settings. Let me know if you want to know more about this. But I was thinking to do uh, how to actually install instances using Portainer. Let me know if you're interested in that part of it and I'll do another tutorial. 
And as you can see here, we got the two users. One is the user, one of the, is the admin. And those two are already being made. It comes as a default installation of Chasm. You can create the users and back to the dashboard. And now we're going to actually have a look at the workspaces, the most excited part of Chasm, where you can actually create workspaces. And then once you finish, you can actually delete that instance. You can go and browse, chat, communication. You got desktop, you got development, games, multimedia, office. There are quite a few of those ones. Unfortunately, to, to have more, you can't just add from Docker. You know, it got to be done on the, in, in their platform. Otherwise, it will work. But apart from that, as you can see, you got Tor, you got Signal, you got uh, Oli Office, Ramina again. It's fantastic to create instances. And once you're done, you can actually create. And by the way, everything is quite secure. You know, you can do something with a browser and everything is in closed environment. So you would not get attacked by malicious code. Again, there's a lot of things, a lot of debate about that. Now I'm just spinning up a Firefox. Let's see how long it takes. Don't show up tips on startup and got it. It's up to you. And as you can see, Firefox just started. It is a browser inside a browser. Mind blowing, mind blowing amazing the stuff is you know we're capable to do nowadays as you can see i'm capable to view youtube and this is the channel and works perfectly well mind for this server I only got one megabit i think um this is what i got on my proxmox for each server you know the one i use is you know they're all right for uh, training purposes so once you're done, you got all so many information here. You can actually log out. You can delete the session, as you can see here. So once you're done, you delete. Here we go. Nothing there. Nothing on your actual computer. Quite safe and easy to manage anyway. Let's go back to the admin. As you can see, Firefox 100%. That is what we actually spin up. You will have all the information, usage, and everything else. All the session, if they're live, for example, if I had to go back, I would see one was live session. So again, very simple and very intuitive. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, like and share so the algorithm work and I can get more views and I can bring you more tutorials. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.